Rollover, that's obviously been a big issue for the community. Um, we had to you know, implement something. There were users who were almost caught in a recurring you know, uh, subscription and they weren't spending their Sky credits. So it was kind of just accruing out of control. We had to put something in place to kind of capture that. Uh, on the business side, it actually, to us, you know, it counts as uh, having a big balance of Sky credits that a user's accruing. And we feel like we always need to have enough servers, obviously, to let everybody hop on and spend those Sky credits. So it was just creating a, a massive uh, issue for us uh, with regards to accounting. And uh, we don't feel that those users were necessarily engaged. They might have just been accruing those credits without knowing. So we had to implement some sort of inactivity period on the platform. Um, a lot of people have been asking about B2B and kind of the new the new Liquid Sky website, as you can see here. Let me pull that up as well. So you can see liquidsky.com. Uh, we have an enterprise platform now, so it's not just um, for members of the community to hop on and launch the Sky computer. But third parties now, we're opening up the platform to allow uh, to start their own Sky computers um, and access the platform. That's an effort for us to open up everything um, and start to you know, allow people not only to work on um, the platform, but offer their own services and their own cloud gaming platforms. So really it's just more of a, a way for us to say that uh, we're opening up the platform. You don't have to use our UI. Um, you don't have to use our, um, our native client. You can create your own client, your own theme, your own um, branded gaming experience to trigger this backend that we've developed. And you'll see us kind of over time opening up a lot of the capabilities of our platform um, and exposing kind of some of what we we built for Liquid Sky Games in that enterprise platform. So think of it almost as um, if you're a game company and you want to optimize your game for Liquid Sky um, or if you want to offer uh, your own cloud gaming service, we're just giving people the tools to do that because we think that um, in opening up the platform we'll find more things, we'll be able to optimize um, the service and at some point by opening up Liquid Sky Games we think a whole lot of cool features and bug fixes will will come from that as well. Um, great, so I'm gonna hop into a game room. <clears throat> so again, someone uh, in chat asked how we'll let's widen that up and we'll talk a little bit about <clears throat> the origin. Where Liquid Sky came from. So this was, yeah, so this is about four, uh, four years ago now. I was in college. Um, a lot of people in college were playing, you know, various games on their school-issued laptops, constantly trying to figure out uh, how to squeeze as much uh, juice as they could out of it, so getting the highest frame rates. Odd gaming had always been around, um, but there weren't a whole lot of people focused on doing. Uh, there actually wasn't anyone yet focused on doing. Uh, kind of more of a desktop as a service for gamers, a platform that was open where people could install any game to it instead of what we call now as cloud native, so very kind of restricted um, platforms. And I just started messing around uh, with virtualization, um, streaming technologies, how to get the latency down by doing a lot of things in bare metal and in hardware, um, and just really kind of those two problems that I think on live struggled with, which were how to get all the games to be supported on the platform and how to very quickly um, get the latency reduced um, and make sure that the experience felt like it would on a native PC right next to you. Um, I started working on all that while, you know, right when I got out of college, um, very quickly kind of had some success uh, on the virtualization side and the streaming side. Um, so I got some funding and then got introduced to some really powerful people who introduced me to um, some people to join the management team and the company's been growing pretty quickly ever since then. And yeah, I'm not 65, I'm trying to read the chat right now. I really feel like I need to uh, win one of these games right now. Hundred percent. 
I'm feeling it. What is the difference between the old streamer and the new streamer? So, I think I talked quickly about that in the past, uh, the beginning of the stream, <laughs> when I was trying to figure out how to talk and play at the same time. The, uh, the new streamer is really just the new stream protocol from the ground up, so it's more portable, uh, it works with more games, the mouse support should be working in a lot more different programs and games, um, but really it was just overall to handle two things, reducing the latency and handling network conditions uh, that vary. Packet loss is one of the biggest issues in uh, cloud gaming today. It's so hard to talk. I'm in the head though. So hard to talk while playing. Um, packet loss is one of the biggest issues to streaming services today. Interactive streaming, so kind of real time streaming like this, where you're clicking on things and touching things, and uh, the response needs to be you know under 100 milliseconds. Um, packet loss just kind of affects the entire screen. So working on how to deal with that, how to be adaptive, um, the algorithms behind changing the stream um, real time in order to compensate for that, that's a lot of what the new streamer has. And it, for the most part, was a very large rewrite. So removing a lot of the old code that we had, putting a whole lot of new code in. But you can see right now we're kind of simulating a lot of packet loss up to you know 12%, which is insane. And the video is still there. Um, that's kind of what the new streamer is all about. So over the radio interference, things that cause data outages, in a you know in some sort of a video streaming service, you'd see it buffering. But with us, there's no time to do that. Um, so we have to be very quick with fixing the stream, reacting, and making sure that when loss happens, we predicted it would happen, so we compensate for it and send the data multiple times. Um, so probably hard to notice from a feature perspective, what the features are of the new streamer aside from the metrics being outputted, but a lot of changes went into the back end. So yeah. So someone in the uh, chat would like to know um, status of ad support of is it gone forever or will we ever see that back? Yeah, it was something that we were really excited about. We partnered up with an advertising um, platform to do that. They had given us kind of uh, they had pitched us on an inventory that didn't really exist in the end, just to make it clear. So they said that we would have a certain amount of advertisements available around the world for, to show people, um, and they just weren't there. They couldn't they couldn't fill the inventory fast enough. So we ended up spending a lot of money trying to pay for these sky credits um, and just showing users ads that, to be honest with you, the advertiser wasn't necessarily paying uh, as much as they were supposed to be for. Doing that inventory turned out to be just a massive problem for the partner that we picked, especially internationally, even though, once again, they told us it wouldn't be an issue, so we launched the platform. Um, we do hope someday to you know, look at bringing it back, but we need to find an advertising partner who absolutely can, uh, can cover the inventory, because the worst thing that we can do is announce that you can use the platform with the ad-supported plan and then not have any ads available. Um, or you know, we show ads um, and try to compensate the user on the back end, uh, which creates more issues because then there's a lot of people consuming the service and not paying for it. We can't get as many servers as we need. Um, I think in focusing on reducing the cost uh, of the platform um, and really just optimizing everything that we can and making it as good as it can be, we'll get closer to the point where we can start to find advertising content to help take some of the cost out of it. Um, right now, GPU is very expensive. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin mining, all those things have been driving up the cost. It's difficult to offer uh, kind of GPU-based services today, but the cost of GPU in the cloud is going to drop, um, hopefully, and as it drops, things like that start to look more, um, become more likely. What else? So... Alexander. Yeah, uh, pronouncing the names, by the way, is a bad <laughs> idea. Was it your first intention to cloud game environment? Exactly, that was kind of the plan from the beginning. So everyone before us, I mean, people had tried to do services 
like CloudLift where you can bring the license of a game and not pay for it twice, but it was still a list of supported cloud native games. We wanted to focus on not only cloud native, which are the games that are designed for the cloud that work in the cloud, um, but also you know virtualization, the ability to run any game that's designed for PC on the platform, and furthermore any program, um, just to use it you know as you would a normal PC, and that introduces in itself um, some complexities. The storage is very challenging at scale. Um, each user has his entire kind of virtual hard drive. He has his own copy of the game. It creates a lot of really hard to solve problems at scale when you start to have you know, tens of thousands of people using it. And then um, you know, kind of there's latencies introduced by virtualizing the hardware that we wanted to compensate for um, and focus on. So we started kind of with the harder problem of letting uh, any game run out of the box. Um, we're slowly kind of, you know, going to support cloud native games as well. But, you know, the virtual gaming PC, the Sky Computer, that's really what differentiated us in the beginning. And, and then with that, kind of doing uh, a lot of what most companies at the time and still are doing with the streaming, um, just doing it all in the same place to kind of reduce that latency. So the server itself, just kind of at the bare metal level, um, doing as much as we can with the streaming software to make sure that the experience is as fast as it can be. That being said, the cloud native games are great. In fact, if the game publishers work with us, which is part of what we're doing on the enterprise side to try to help facilitate that, we can make the experience a whole lot better. Um, but for now, we really need to find a way to just make this experience as refined as possible, as low latency as possible, and work with as many different pieces of content out of the box as possible. Um, so I'm going to try to talk while streaming, but <laughs> I'll let you know. So you might, I think you kind of touched um, uh, Since Liquid Sky is an lab and offer great yeah so we're working with some companies um, you know on that and there are a few companies believe it or not that are using liquid sky to offer their own cloud gaming or streaming applications now um, so you'll see kind of more and more of that at the on the back end though it's the same exact platform so anything that happens here appears there and anything that we fix here appears there as well. Um, so kind of Liquid Sky is not just about gaming, it's about streaming the programs as well and kind of the heavyweight stuff. It's really supposed to be just a tool for cross-platform. So if you have a program that's designed for a PC um, that you want to be able to run on your phone, now you can do that. There's a mechanism for it. And while the Skype computer, kind of the entire, streaming the entire virtual PC is kind of a heavy way to do that, it's tackling the hardest problem first um, of streaming an entire kind of gaming PC interface, an entire desktop, um, and then streaming individual applications becomes a whole lot easier. Um, we're working with some companies though uh, who want to offer their software, believe it or not, um, on mobile or on Android um, to do that for them using this, the same exact experience and platform that you have today. Um, gaming is also the best place for us to, you know, to, to build this technology out because it's the most latency sensitive and um, hardcore use case of interactive streaming. We really feel that someday, once we nail the latency and, and, and nail the cost and the experience, um, that we'll get a lot closer to a world where you can stream every kind of app, um, not just high performance ones like games and ad and VR and AR and streaming, um, but you know, streaming very lightweight, very thin, things like UI, UX at some point as well. But right now, you know, today the cost, kind of the cost model that streaming requires only makes sense for the very high end use cases. Um, so we're very focused on those. But you've seen a lot of other industries like music, television, movies. Uh, switch to the streaming model just because it, it makes a whole lot more sense that someone doesn't need to think about it. Um, it can just kind of you know, click a button and hop into a piece of content. It comes from the closest server.
Uh, we have a we have another question from the community. Uh, it's actually posed on the forums and. Uh, How do I run for so long? <laughs> and Supreme and Supreme Chow asked as well in chat. Um, but what kind of support can we be coming to smart TVs and or Android uh, like Android TV? No, it's a great question. So the the client as it exists today on Android does you know it works on a Chromebook uh, I mean an Android TV if you sideload it. But official support kind of requires us modifying the UI um, extensively to make it you know something that can be completely used, um, entirely used, without necessarily having um, you know a keyboard or a mouse or a touch device. So just the controller. Um, and that's actually a lot harder than it sounds. So the team is already working on that. Um, but it's, you know, our, our main priority right now is focusing on the platforms that we have. Uh, for those of you that remember, we actually had a client um, for Mac, Linux, even iOS at one point, And we just decided to slow down and focus on PC and Android. Um, because you know, we want to make sure the experience is completely perfect, you know, as good as it can be. Uh, before moving on and so I think you know to answer your question we're focused on you know we just did this big rewrite of the stream protocol for PC and Android we want to crush that first before adding support for things like Android TV um, the UI changes we can make very quickly and in fact people are already working on them but the back-end changes that are required um, to really support a TV which has a dynamic, you know, a different refresh rate than let's say a monitor. It might be much lower. Um, it might need to talk to the um, the device, you know, outputting to it over HDMI um, to modify things like the refresh rate to increase it. It's just a, it's a, it's a different, it's a different platform that we, we aren't ready to take on quite yet just until we nail this experience. That being said, if you want to play around with the support that we've been working on for things like Android TV and Chromebook, you can always sideload the existing app. It is the same app. Um, this functionality is there. It will see the Android TV. Um, I think we, we actually even have some, some stuff written for the Samsung DeX dock. If you put that your phone in the dock um, to broadcast to the television, you can see that operate as well. Um, so it is being worked on. It's just not something that you'll see probably publicly launched as its own client, um, at least at least for the next few months. Uh, so we have another question. <clears throat> Do you consider yourself, I'm assuming Liquid Sky, as a cloud computing company or cloud gaming company? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Um, you know, it's interesting. Interactive content. We consider ourselves an interactive content company. So we're trying to coin the phrase ICDN. It's like content delivery network. A CDN is what's used for Netflix, Spotify, all the stuff that you kind of use that stream today. Uh, interactive isn't really pushed through CDNs a whole lot today. So the, the parts of the interface like this that you click on, um, things that you touch and interact with real time, uh, VR, AR, gaming, uh, programs, those are not streamed necessarily today. Um, we think of ourselves as an interactive content you know, company, uh, not developing it, but a cloud for that content. The biggest type of interactive content right now, um, and you know, kind of the best place for us to build the technology and, and test it out, is definitely gaming, and we're all gamers, so that's why we started the company. So I'd say today we're more of a gaming company with the hope that we'll slowly um, grow and become more of an interactive streaming company outside of just 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 gaming. Okay, laying down over there. Looks like he is. This is a new strategy that he's using right here. Hit him in the head. <laughs> what other questions do we have? Um, I don't know how far down this list. I think I went through all of them actually, except. Huh? Oh yeah. Keep sending your questions, guys. 
right now. I think I want to see you get a chicken dinner. Yeah, why don't we do a first person game then? I know it's a little bit harder to watch. Let's just let's just go for it right now. Might need to use both headphones for that though. Yeah, Frost wants to know what your favorite meal is. It's a great question. This is the kind of stuff I was hoping this AMA would be about, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> the easy stuff. Yeah, it's just easier, man. It's hard to play games at the same time as talking. Um, but food. Favorite kind of meal. I like Italian food. That might start, you know. What kind of dish? What's your... Chicken parm. Oh. Yeah. Very thankful for that question, by the way. So what are the chances you're going to get a chicken dinner in this? Uh... Thousand percent. <laughs> I'm going to approach it with confidence and see what happens. We need to, we need to believe we're going to win right now. I keep doing hot drops because I feel like it's the most entertaining to watch, but I'm starting to think. Maybe a military base, scaffolding. How far are we from our data center? So right now, uh, the closest data center is Washington, D.C. Um, so you can see the latency up there. This is about seven milliseconds. So that was your that was that your question? I, no, I was I was trying to help someone. Oh, they were asking yeah. about their data center. Oh, I don't know how far you are from your data center. Morgan probably can help you figure that out. You know what, Chambliss? You can say that. You can just. You're just pumping me up full of confidence right now. Gonna do this little trick that you probably... I've never seen this. Oh yeah. Not supposed to hurt me that much, but uh... And it's not supposed to do this. Oh, oh I'm fine. Oh. Until you get punched <laughs> once in the head. Uh, yeah. Jambos, that was 20 seconds, so I think you were spot on. Our, our CFO's favorite thing in this game is when Ian dies. I, it kind of is his favorite thing. We're constantly battling him. <laughs> <laughs> you have some disappointed fans, Ian. Yeah, but at least they were rooting. They were rooting for me. That's unlike uh, unlike the people in this <laughs> office right now. That was not a very good trick. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great trick. It was just slightly to the left. I hit the I hit the wrong angle on it. Really, what happened? Also, I haven't done that in a long time. I'm wondering if they kind of patched it. You used to be able to land right on the top of it. It wouldn't kick you to the side like that. Also, my math around the Earth's rotation is a little bit off in the wind. <laughs> if I would have factored in you know, the gravity of Mars, I think I would have been fine. All it was. My math was just a little bit off. Steve Khakis. All right. Should I drop this time? It's going to be a risky play, but I'm going to go for it. I take off my parachute. <laughs> okay. Wait, they actually let you. Well, it didn't have the red thing. That would be, that would be legendary. I don't know why they would ever let you do that, though. To be honest with you.
This is not going well for me. This place that I just looted. It's literally nothing. Oh, that's when I say that. Uh, so someone asks, I mean, uh, what is the max ping? Uh, or what is, what ping is suitable for streaming games? Um, you know, so round trip is usually what people talk about when they say ping. So I'd say each way you'd want to, so kind of thinking about it round trip, you'd want to have under 30 milliseconds. So 15 milliseconds each way to play a really, really kind of twitchy game like this. You can have much higher to play, you know, point and click games, uh, things that are not as sensitive as a shooter would be. But for this game in particular, uh, you know, you really want to have kind of the network latency that you see the top right here. You'd want to have that under probably 20 milliseconds each way, so that'd be 40 milliseconds total of ping. <laughs> Johnny says, uh, are we using the excuse for deaths being that Ian doesn't have much time to practice since he's hard at work improving Liquid Sky? <laughs> Exactly, man. <laughs> that door's open. Then. Where am I getting shot from here? I was just putting in my headphone right when he killed me. This is not working out very well. People are watching me get killed. <laughs> Alright, what else have we got? I'm gonna get some help. Person. So the, Questions. The, the ping question, he specifically asked you about liquid. Well, back to the Coriolis, uh, the Coriolis effect. I think <laughs> that, that makes the most sense to talk about because that's why I just died again. My math was off and I was kind of spinning and I was running and the bullets, you know, I thought that they were going to miss me. Here's rotation, man, that'll get you. You forgot to mention the magnetic fields. And the magnetic fields, the, you know, the. You thought you were on the other map. The polar ice caps, that's exactly. Right. Closer to the North Pole. Exactly. The fact that global, you know, kind of climate change is affecting. Um, excuse that has been used before by many professional gamers. All right. Do another hot drop. I feel like that's the stable solution. So this time I'm gonna have both my headphones in and I'm gonna be ready to go. This is the hardest I think I'm ever gonna have concentrated in. World wants to know how old you are. 65. I believe it. Five and a half. More than that, I win right now. I think. 
think everyone watching would agree. Um, so we touched on other clients, but um, do we have any news we can share in regards to uh, clients? Actually, we can. talking while sharing it. Tricky, it's difficult, it's risky. <laughs> it's risky because what, I gotta be careful what I say um, when I throw out any timelines. But the, the Mac client, we're actively working on it. Um, that is actually the next client for us. Um, it's very similar in a lot of ways to the PC client. Just just hold on because there's a guy over here that I want to get. And before I talk about timelines, make sure I. I was totally behind the... <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how far behind the thing I was though? It's crazy. Wonder if... Don't you do it. The flashbangs. With the flank. Got him. Oh, still got him. Dude. Uh oh, he's got friends though. Oh, it wouldn't let me shoot yet. It's a good strategy though, Chambers. Come on. Alright, what was the question? So, we're talking about the Mac, Mac. client. Yeah. So, with regards to the Mac client, um, you know, that's one of the next clients on our list. Um, our goal is to have it, you know, done in the next, I believe, three months. Um, to have an alpha of the Mac client, so don't get too excited. We have released it in the past. Um, we didn't want to have too many things, kind of, for our team here to manage at the same time. So we kind of went back and moved it. We'll be putting it back out there, probably in alpha stage, so the people who would release receive it would be um, on the, you know, on the community close with Morgan. Um, Hopefully in the next uh, three months, we'll have a version of the Mac client. Um, so that's the timeline there. Mac is actually, believe it or not, easier for us to deal with than Windows. Uh, Windows, there's a lot of different types of GPUs, a lot of CPUs, a lot of models, a lot of people who make PCs with different types of hardware. We need to get custom with each type of hardware that a PC can have in it um, in order to kind of make sure that we're interacting you know, we're dealing with the video stream, uh, decoding the video as efficiently as we can with that device, with that GPU or APU or even um, CPUs with hardware decoders in them. Um, and they all have their own different bugs and caveats. On Mac, it's actually a lot easier. Um, they don't have as much variety in the hardware, um, so we can focus a lot more. But that being said, this will be the, all, the first release of the Mac client with the new stream protocol. But we've had one in-house. Uh, we had it released previously with the old stream protocol. With the new stream protocol, though, this will be the first time we'll have tested it. Um, and once again, the new stream protocol kind of focuses on dealing with packet loss and reducing kind of the latency. Um, those two things kind of involved a lot of rewrites of code. So yeah. Great. Um... So, Johnny says, I've seen a lot of non-believers in cloud gaming after they've had experiences uh, with the various companies in the past. How does Liquid Sky plan to change their minds in the future? How do we plan to change their minds? I think at this point, I used to have to pitch people a whole lot on cloud gaming and kind of go through explaining why it's the future and why I believe it's the future. Why I believe streaming is the future of everything that we do. 
Um, but I don't have to, I feel like, as much anymore because the industry leaders, whether it's Microsoft or Google or Sony, um, Electronic Arts, even though I know gamers have mixed feelings sometimes there, they've all acknowledged that cloud gaming is the next generation for them. Um, there may be another console in the middle, but then it will be cloud gaming. PC gaming is a, you know, it's a difficult um, step just because it's a very hardcore kind of group uh, who's used to having very high-end frame rates, very high-end experience. But think of cloud gaming as a way to bring PC gaming to everybody uh, all at once. So focusing kind of more when explaining uh, cloud gaming, um, then is it the future? Because I do think it is. But who is it the future for? Initially, it's going to be people who are looking for cross-platform kind of portability, playing something or using a program on all their devices. Um, then it'll move through kind of the casual gamer, um, which is, you know, we feel like we're beyond that now, and then um, start touching the hardcore gaming communities. Um, but the latency needs to get incredibly low, and we're approaching that from a lot of different angles. The hardware, um, the software, and also just physically getting closer to users with servers. Our data center footprint, we're actively working on improving and increasing um, and adding data centers that will be closer to people physically. But we think that streaming and a lot of people could kind of lead the space, agree with that now, is going to be the solution for, for high-end gaming. Um, so it's, it's really just kind of a matter of which platform uh, will be the leader there. And we feel by opening our platform up, by working with any game made for PC and not restricting a catalog, um, whatever you purchase on the platform will work on your own PC, your own um, gaming rig. Uh, we feel like we're, you know, we're going to have the most compatibility down the road, as many titles and as many devices as we can, um, and that's kind of the approach we're taking to lead the space. Uh, but it's it's inevitable. The industry leaders kind of acknowledge it's inevitable. The game companies all want to go directly to their users and kind of get away from these console ecosystems that are very walled in, um, and users want to access. I think the biggest PC gaming catalog out there, which is um, PC. And they want to access all the ultra high-end games uh, and not be restricted to catalogs offered by game consoles or offered by mobile platforms. So whether or not you're going to have a device in your home that's running like a Liquid Sky server or some sort of a streaming server, because you want to kind of be mining, you want to be participating somehow, um, in offering your own service instead of having something remote streaming it, or whether you use one of our edge servers kind of in the network um, that will hopefully at some point be in your mobile um, operator or your you know your network operator's network itself um, to reduce the latency. It's kind of up to you, and it'll become a matter of, of price at some point. You know, you can use a shared kind of cloud compute approach, where you can use different pieces of hardware. Um, that when it's you know collecting dust at night and you're not accessing it, someone else can use that same piece of hardware, or you can have a dedicated device for for accessing it. But the device that you use to to play the games, to interact, um, in my opinion, is going to end up being very thin, very lightweight, um, very specialized at just simple caching, I/O, and displaying um, the stream. It's not going to be something incredibly heavy, um, processor intensive hot, inefficient, the device that you use is going to be thin. That's going to take a streaming platform kind of in the middle to connect the dots. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to take five, ten minute break, and we will be back. Thanks, guys.
the audio good? Well, so I think we were talking quickly about kind of what we think the future uh, of cloud streaming is going to be. Um, in particular, what the device is going to be, what the cloud platform is going to be. Is it the future? There's still a lot of people who are against um, against uh, streaming. They don't think it's going to be the future. I just think that, you know, four years ago, we had a very hard time explaining to people that this was inevitable. Um, that the device that would be kind of your display is going to become untethered from the device that's being used for compute. Uh, but now a lot of the industry leaders out there, um, like Xbox, you know, Sony, um, have acknowledged that this is kind of their next leap. Um, they're going to move to the cloud where they can kind of get a shared economy going um, of the compute. They can build more powerful games that can leverage a cluster of GPUs as opposed to just one GPU. They can be more efficient with the games, having them do a rendering job once um, or having them do kind of state management once in one place instead of having everyone render. Um, they can do a lot more caching of kind of shared assets. Uh, so you kind of think about what what gaming could look like if it was cloud-based uh, explicitly. These games could be much bigger, they could have much higher frame rates. Uh, a lot of kind of different things can happen. And what you see with Liquid Sky today is kind of that first leap into bridging to existing content. That door. So kind of starting to um, find a way to bridge to an existing platform, a big gaming platform, PC, um, to allow people to take those uh, games that they purchase on PC and play them on their different devices, um, their thin devices that might not have the resources. But I think that the iteration after that, which is sort of what our enterprise platform is sparking, uh, where you're going to see people developing games for cloud platforms that are much bigger, that can utilize everything available uh, in the cloud. That's where things start to get make a lot more sense for the ultra hardcore gamers. Once the optimizations are there, and once the content is better, um, it runs better, you know, in the cloud than it could run, uh, as opposed to it being very similar, very close to um, same experience as a native PC. When it can be better in the cloud. I think is when you'll see the last kind of uh, the ultra hardcore gamers start to move there. But right now, you know, we're very focused on enabling platforms that can't do this stuff um, to do this stuff. And you know, working on enabling people in our community to go in and use their own instance, their own Sky PC in our cloud to, to install their own games and bring their own content to but also working with game developers to kind of create a platform where they can optimize content for um, the edge and the cloud. That's our goal. I do think, you know, that there's, uh, there are other companies now kind of working on similar platforms. We've been doing this a, you know, a long time. Um, kind of the, this approach of virtualizing the entire PC, working with any game out of the box. Um, and it's hard once you start to scale it. We've had a lot of users on the platform, a lot of people kind of uh, kicking the tires. You all have been incredible in giving us the feedback and the bugs and things to work on. Um, and a lot of it just seems really simple when you start, when you have only a few people using the platform, because it is very simple. But then as you start to add more and more and more, some of it just doesn't scale. So we've had to develop a lot of technology to really take it from 10 people you know, to a million people. Um, and that's the, that's kind of the big advantage that I'd say we have. If you kind of go back and remember um, all the issues kind of that we saw for, we see a lot of our competitors diving through all those issues right now <coughs> and kind of running into those issues. Um, we do kind of see this as an industry change, so it's not just going to be us. It's going to take a lot of people to push it. Um, and working on the enterprise side, we're hoping to create a platform for those companies to work with us as opposed to against us. Um, but really all we want at the end of the day is to try to make a streaming experience as close to native um, as we can. Um, and that's, that's the, the, the primary focus. The use cases, all the different things that you can do with it. I mean, the fact that this is literally running um, an entire PC right now um, at the edge that I can interact with with latency like this that's kind of our focus um, enabling all the different use cases and all the different uh, things that people want the features that they want uh, or like to see 
those are things that we hope we'll have a platform for people to add um, to. But really, just focusing on the starting this uh, the Sky Computer experience, making sure it's performing as well as it can be and streaming as well as it can be. We have a massive head start kind of in that space, and we've been through a lot to get here. We have a team who understands kind of what the struggles are and kind of what it's like to push that rock up that hill while we're waiting for the network to change um, and working with the network as it is today, things like packet loss and latency and, and high ping um, to adapt. Just challenges that people don't see until they scale. Um, but our vision is really a future where you're going to have a very, you know, very, very thin device. Either it's a head mounted display. It's a you know a native display that you handheld display that you hold, um, or it's a television, or it's an audio-based operating system. Whatever it is, it's going to be very specialized. It's not going to have something like a CPU that's very good at doing a lot of different tasks. It's going to have a very specialized um, thin client, you know, um, installed on it, and a series of hardware that's really good at just caching and displaying video, rendering video, decoding video, and the device that does the compute. Um, is going to be untethered from it because that just makes the most sense at scale and at some point it's going to be used to do everything um, I think but in the early days focusing on gaming makes the most sense so in case you haven't noticed do not get me started on a rant <laughs> <laughs> about cloud streaming or cryptocurrency or mining or anything like that either all bad stuff um, so we have one user that wants to know uh what can we look forward to seeing on the Android client? We can look forward to seeing on the Android client. In the, in the near future and long term. Yes, yeah, so Android's a big part of kind of what we believe in. Um, running a PC on a PC is great when your PC doesn't have enough power. Uh, you can stream a more powerful one, but really interested in kind of where we see the world going, which is more uh, kind of mobile. People move around, they, they want to have one device that can do everything. Android, uh, with regards to features, we're really focused on the streaming side first. So kind of increasing the frame rates. A lot of the phones coming out now for gaming have things like 90 hertz displays. Uh, they can start to have higher frame rates streamed to them. Uh, phones that have things like you know 2K resolution, 4K resolutions, um, and they can handle decoding video a lot faster. Um, so reducing the latency is kind of one of our main focuses. First and foremost on Android. To be honest with you, you're not going to see a lot of features coming to Android. Uh, say for the next five or six months, we're really focused on adding um, Android TV support, Chromebook support, uh, and improving the experience as it exists on Android today. Just to be blunt, you know, we're not as interested in adding features right now. Um, we are building a platform where people will be able to add features to this platform um, on their own. But you know, we're really just focused on making the experience better and making you know it work on more devices right now. Somebody asked who you are, by the way. Who's sitting? Who's sitting in the background? Hi, I'm Morgan. I'm the community manager. I'm uh, I'm pulling all the strings behind the scenes today. In case you've ever know, you've ever wondered what a Morgan looks like, that's a Morgan. <laughs> um, all right. So one of the other questions. Um, Someone did kind of mention one of our direct competitors, which uh, I will rephrase the question as, what sets Liquid Sky apart from our direct competitor? Direct competitors. So there's... there's why are we special? Why are we special? We're, so I like to think we're very special. Well, our, as users of the platform, you should probably know why we're incredibly special uh, on the platform. But what I will say is... Um, you know, there's two different types of competitors that we have. We have the cloud native only competitors. So the competitors who only work with a small catalog of games. We work with that same catalog as well, but we also have the virtualization platform um, that works with any game out of the box designed for PC. Um, as you see in the Liquid Sky Games beta, we even have the full kind of desktop mode where you can install your own games to it. Um, that's available just to kind of let you guys really beat on the platform and install whatever you can. Um, so I'd say the ability to work with any game the day it comes out, anything designed for PC, is very important. Uh, there are a few competitors that have that now, but they're more like they're more where we were four years ago. They're they're taking the approach of, of bare metal, which 
um, you know, one user on a server, one user on a GPU kind of approach. We started that way and very quickly we got kind of over our skis, definitely not the business nor technical term. Um, but when you have a user stuck in a stuck to a server, he's bound to a server, and he can't get off of that server, and he's sharing that server, maybe there's a hundred people allocated to that server, um, and there's only a few graphics cards on that server, it creates a utilization issue at scale. So you're going to have massive amounts of users competing uh, for a pool of resources, the same pool of resources, and there's a lot of bottlenecks that get introduced. The answer is it doesn't scale well. As you add more users, it gets worse. And you know, what we end up needing to have to do is really carving up um, and making everyone highly available like you are today. You could change data centers, you can move between servers. You probably don't know this, but it happens on the back end. You're actually moving between storage platforms, between servers, between cloud providers and our own bare metal data centers. You're moving between everything freely, which is a big part of improving utilization. And our competitors, are not doing that, uh, which means as they add users, the performance uh, or the ability to even get into the platform is going to get more and more difficult. Um, as many of you probably are aware, we did have Elite at one point, which was the bare metal performance package, the instance types, your Gamer Pro and Elite. Um, that, you know, it's difficult to support because you have a lot of people taking up an entire GPU essentially um, and scaling that trying to add that to the platform becomes a massive utilization issue. And it's very difficult to predict, so it's hard to figure out how many servers to get, how to scale each data center individually, and what the algorithm should be for scaling out those data centers um, and trying to predict that usage. So what I will say is we started where the, the, the competitors that we have that do offer the full, you know, the full experience, A, they're either incredibly expensive because they're using a public cloud service that's not optimized for GPU, or B, um, they, you know, they're, they're going to have performance issues as they scale in multiple data centers, and then what they're doing is very tied to one particular data center, for example. Um, so, be interesting, I mean, a lot of, a lot of, you know, you are active in our community, which is a place that you could talk, you know, and um, explain the experience, because we really are interested in making it better. Um, and all the feedback has come from you guys. It is incredibly hard with something at this scale and with this many metrics <laughs> to try to figure out uh, what someone's issue is or bug is or experience is. It's not as simple as a lot of games where they just have a crash report tool. Did it crash? Did it not? What was the frame rate in the game? And they can just report those two metrics. We have thousands. Um, and it's very difficult because it's also fast in real time to put things in the middle of each frame to stop and analyze it, to say, did this frame look correct? Um, was there anything wrong with it? Was there packet loss? Was there screen tearing? So we really need you guys to help us scale this out and find uh, issues of the platform. We have a community for that where you guys are very active and a lot of our competitors don't necessarily have that community, so we're not sure. Um, but I will say that a lot of them are going down the direction that we started at and it doesn't doesn't end well. Eventually, you end up having to start to, to build a cloud. What we did. Any news on the uh, potential for a USB pad? Oof, Morgan. Morgan's been poking us on that feature for a long time. <laughs> I listen to you guys. I'm here for you. I do as well. We all do. Yeah, of course. Um, but there's practicality. So we have a USB pass through. Um, and it is available on the enterprise platform. Why is it not in Liquid Sky Games? Every time we, we push something like USB pass through, um, it gets abused. So we had a USB pass through in the original beta, the first one. In fact, we did the controller with no compression and the keyboard and mouse with no compression and just used USB pass through in the beginning, which some of our competitors are doing now. Um, and the difficulty there is we saw people doing things like installing games to a USB mass storage device, like a thumb drive, remote. <laughs> and it was streaming the entire game, the 60 gigabyte game as they were playing it. Um, we saw people, you know, trying to use incredibly high DPI settings, for example, on their mouse, uh, which was creating congestion um, in the network and actually adding more latency and creating lower refresh rates. Every time we open Pandora's box, like USB pass-through, um, it gets abused. 
and it creates more problems for the, for the user. What we will be doing with USB pass-through very slowly is enabling certain types of devices. Um, and we just feel that's the best approach. As I did mention earlier, we have plans to kind of open up a lot of what we're doing on the UI um, so that you guys can start to add features and look at things. I think there will be ways for you guys to enable a lot of things on your own when that happens. Um, but for the user who's not you know, as um, inclined on the development side, we're going to be slowly adding these features because they can make things a lot worse. Especially things like um, inputs, those are done through USB, microphones, audio is not compressed, takes up all of your upload speed, um, things that just create a lot of issues. We also have had, I should mention, 4K for a long time now. Um, we don't want to release that until we've nailed 1080p. We want to have it perfectly, you know, 100% um, as fast as we can possibly stream, as high quality as we possibly can stream, and the highest bitrate we can handle um, 1080p at, you know, 100 or plus FPS on the unlimited side before moving on to 4K. There's also not a lot of phones out there that support 4K. 4K. Um, I would say they support it, but they can't decode video that quickly. So the frame rates that they can handle at 4K, even laptops, are closer or below 30 FPS. Um, and that's not how we're developing our platform. We're targeting 60 to 120. It's just different. Um. X265, someone asked about. So yes, uh, it's needed even for 4K volumetric and to get the spherical for VR and AR, which is all really important um, to compress with a lot of prediction because the latency requirements are so much higher. It absolutely, um, we do support it. In Liquid Sky Games today, you're only using 64. Um, once again, when we open things up a little bit, you guys will be able to play around with a lot of these things that we've developed but not released. But we really want to focus on just nailing the experience before releasing them to the beta. Um, it is a paid beta. People are paying to support, help support, I should say, um, the platform. So we want to make sure that everything is kind of working as well as it can be, and not just a series of features that if you turn them on, it'll, it'll break things for the user. Pop it in. So someone asked about pre or had pre-installing games. That's about. Yeah, the this why not allow users for the most. Why not allow users to play games they don't own? Now, I'm not going to answer that. It's obviously <laughs> you don't purchase the game, you're allowed to play the game. I will say, thankfully, a lot of people are a lot of the game developers are moving towards more of a freemium approach where the game's free. Um, next time I'll try to play, I'll play Fortnite or something. Um, and, you know, that's a very different approach, uh, which allows a lot more people to play the game. Um, but we, you know, we don't want to get involved in sponsoring or working with any particular game. Our goal is to give you know, kind of people the ability to optimize their game for our platform, but to come as close to supporting every single game out of the box uh, as we can platform without modifying it. Um, so there's really two sections to our service. There's Sky Computer and then there's Cloud Native. And games that are optimized for the cloud and built for the cloud, uh, we want to have a platform to support that. We really just want to come as close as we can to supporting the game out of the box um, by virtualizing the, the PC as well as we can. And someone asked about, uh, I don't know they asked about drivers with regards to grid or something earlier. Um, depending on the GPU that's running in the platform and depending on the server it's running on, um, that's one of the most difficult challenges that we have. You're moving between servers, you're moving between GPUs, you're moving between data centers. Um, that functionality, I believe, is not in Liquid Sky Games today. You have to delete your Sky computer to move, um, but we have that functionality. Um, so when you move uh, between all this different hardware, it's very difficult to make sure that the game doesn't need to be changed, um, that the drivers look the same to the game. That's you know, the system that we've been building on the driver's side. Um, it's how do we kind of 
make a, a virtual layer, a driver that just doesn't change, where all these users can keep switching between vendors, between AMD, NVIDIA, all the different types of drivers that the cards have, without the you know the user having to do anything or the game having to change any settings. Um, we have been working kind of hard on that on the back end. It's still not released into Liquid Sky Games, which is part of the, the difficulty for us to update the drivers today. We kind of have this push and update, but in the future that'll all be real time and dynamic. Um, depending on the GPU as well, sometimes you'll see things. Um, you know, certain drivers that are optimized for that GPU or whatever it's. Uh, virtual GPU accelerator is, whether it's grid, whether it's uh, MX GPU, um, you'll see kind of that driver pop in as well because those can get us much closer hardware support to virtualizing the GPU for us to then go in with software, carve it up into smaller pieces. <laughs> Here's a fun one. Uh, how low can the latency get with our, our current technology? So if you, if you live in our Washington DC data center, you lived inside of the Washington DC data center. Um, so, you know, your network latency is, let's say it's one millisecond. Your decode latency, I'd say the lowest your latency could possibly get probably be about, about 30 milliseconds of additional latency on the frame. 20. So think about your FPS in a game, you take away from whatever the game is running at one to two of those FPS. That would be the, right now with the technology, that would be the best, I think. That's a great question that we should run, run a test. <laughs> yeah, to see if we, if we put someone in our data center in DC. So, um, another question, Johnny asked uh, about Sam. Is there anything you can talk about as far as our relationship? I cannot, uh, and I hope you guys understand, we try to be incredibly transparent on these. Um, but I can't talk about partnerships or vendors. I know someone mentioned AMD and what we're doing with them. It's still happening. Just sometimes with big companies, things take a little longer than you want them to. Um, and uh, NVIDIA with the new GPU drivers as well. We did talk about how kind of we slow rolled some of that because we just want to focus on making the per perfect experience with the M60s. Adding power to solve a problem is always an easy fix, right? We can always put a bigger GPU. Um, but if we can nail things with the smaller GPU, make the experience as good as we can, then you know it'll be really squeezed out as much as we can on the streaming technology and the virtualization side, as opposed to just brute forcing the problem with more power. Uh, but I can't talk about vendors or anything under an it. <laughs> I guess we're in for some surprises. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, um, I just. It's a difficult, difficult thing for me to talk about on these. Um, so, you know, we talked about the new streamer that was deployed, um, why it was so important. It's really just a new approach to how we manage packet loss and kind of reduce latency. And also QoS, which you get, for those of you that don't know, a quality of service between multiple users. So if you have 10 people um, or, you know, 1,000 people sharing something, uh, how they don't affect each other. So if you have someone you know, Bitcoin mining on their Sky computer, how does that not affect the other person? That was a big part of the streamer as well. Uh, we talked about the new plans, so kind of the inner plan, the prestige plan, the prestige plus plan, the founders club that ties into the prestige plus plan, uh, what that means, um, future, what it means today is recognition for the most part and prioritization. There's a whole lot that we have planned to kind of add to that. We talked about pricing and monthly plans and what we hope to do there, but the platform still needs to be a bit more. Um, we need to, you know, we need the credit system today, just because it, regardless of you know, what happens, if someone is using a server, it removes credits. So it's a way for us to always make sure that we have the right amount of servers uh, being utilized on the platform. Um, and we talked about the fact that we had to remove the rollover with inactivity period. Um, and that was more of a accounting issue for us. And we also saw some users that we think were not active on the platform, just making monthly payments. We don't want this to be that kind of service. Um, so we had to institute kind of the inactivity um, period to just go and clean that up, especially when it, it factors into our, our growth and our purchases of servers and data centers. Um, 
community feedback influencing the changes. Every change that we've made came from the community. I think I'm fairly confident in saying that. Literally every single change um, has come from you guys over the past four years. Um, B2B, we talked briefly about kind of everything that's changing there. Um, you know, it's, it's really us moving away from just being a service and becoming more of a platform where we can work with game publishers, with the different companies, um, and help give them a way to optimize their, their games and their, their programs for the cloud, migrate them to the cloud, um, and also you know, help you all build your own features and functionalities for our platform um, and open some of it up. It's just in its early days and we're working with some people kind of uh, on that, some of our vendors and partners. But it will at some point be a platform that anybody can use uh, to launch their own cloud gaming service, their own um, kind of features and functionalities on our existing Liquid Sky Games product. But this today is a way for us to just kind of make everything work out of the box and come as close as we can and squeeze as much performance as we can out of the gates. Down the road, there's a whole lot that we see happening once people start to optimize for the platform and the service. Um, we talked, you know, I think quickly, or at least I tried to talk about some of these things while I was playing, or I should say trying to play, um, you know, some of the uh, open source plans for the company and how we're going to kind of open up some things with the enterprise platform to help fix bugs, help those in the community that are more developer savvy, um, add features uh, to the platform, things like, I know a lot of you want the stream to Twitch feature, right, embedded in the client. Um, some of the functionality that you've requested that we haven't had time or resources to build to give you a platform to do that. Um, so that enterprise you know, platform is really just us growing and trying to take all these requests that we're getting, uh, all, some of which we can't build, and give people a mechanism for building them. Um, and we have nothing against people who want to use Liquid Sky to offer their own uh, cloud gaming services. As long as the platform is growing, um, and the experience is getting better, so whatever changes they're making are helping the experience for everyone. We see that being a very positive thing. So <clears throat> oh, here's an interesting question. 65. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thought it was the how old are you question. <laughs> People just keep asking. Um, uh, where was it? So... Oh, we did, I mean, didn't mention the GPs. Uh, oh, trying to, I was trying to do the full recap because I was okay. taking notes. Uh, so let's let's sneak this question real quick. Um, does without because we don't want to talk about vendors or calling anyone out by name, but does one set of hardware uh, in regards to the GPU does one competitor have an edge over the other as far as functionality in, within cloud gaming? I'm supposed to filter that one, man. <laughs> um, the AMA, I guess. So, or would you say it's we are not we are not here to decide if one vendor has another has an advantage. What we're here to do is to put both vendors in front of you guys. So what you'll see is you'll see gamer and pro. Um, those might or may not be renamed shortly, um, but you're going to see them for Nvidia for this GPU, this CPU. You'll see them for AMD with this GPU and this CPU. There'll be separate um, performance packages that you can switch between at will. So you can switch between them. At some point, you'll be able to switch between them without restarting your Sky computer just real time. Um, it'll change the cost per minute. That cost will be determined by the vendor um, and our data center providers, obviously, um, the co-location providers, everyone building the data centers for us. And that cost will be determined um, by the vendor. Um, but we're going to put them both in front of you guys. That's our goal. This is going to be a cloud. Um, it's not, we, we call it an edge compute service because it's very close to the user. It's more about getting really close to people and having a lot of data centers instead of being centralized. Um, but the goal is to support everything and let you guys decide. I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussions about it in the community. Yeah. And some, some aliases will be created for Morgan so that he can talk about his feedback and opinions, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't filter that one. That was, a, that was awesome. It was like 80% like, like awesome, but some of it I couldn't add. Um, I had to put my CEO hat on and, that's right. and wiggle around it. It's a vendor question. <laughs>